Hey, so you've been taking notes from day one of your semester, but just rereading your notes whenever you need them misses the most important part of studying, active recall. Recent studies show that people that engage in active recall remember about 80% of the material they studied. This compared to 34% of students who passively went back to their notes to study the material. So let's see how you can turn your notes into good flashcards using ChatGPT. The first step is to gather all of your notes of a specific subject that you want to turn them into flashcards. This includes material from your notebook, class material from research papers or even slides. Once you have everything in one place, it's easier for you to start making flashcards. Here is an example of some notes that I took about tidy data. Once you have all your notes together, break them into smaller chunks of information. This will make it easier to make flashcards and avoid the character limit of ChatGTP. Identify the key points from them and write them down in a document or notebook. This way we can start distilling our notes by removing exercises and examples. Once you have identified the key points from your notes, we can start giving ChatGDP some good examples and some bad examples of questions that we want to make. I have written this prompt based on atomic question and you can copy paste it from the description below. So we're now going to use ChatGDP and I'm going to feed them some examples of good questions and bad questions. This will help ChatGDP to have a better grasp of what we want as a question and what we don't want. I left in every example the reason why I think one is a good question and the other is bad. In the bottom, you can say, my topic is about something, in this case, data science, and here are my notes. As you can see, I just copy and paste the notes. Now, I can just basically tell ChatGDP to generate five questions and answers based on this information. Now, let's see what ChatGTP does. As you can see, ChatGTP created some question and answer from our notes based on the good and the bad examples. Now that we have some questions, let's verify if they are atomic questions. As you can see in question one, ChatGTP learns that we want to define the context of our questions. It also paid attention of the one-to-one -one relationship. So, in question two, we can see that the question is the following. What does the principle of one variable per column mean in the context of tidy data? Now, for example, question 5 is not specific enough, so you can tell ChatGTP to rearrange the question and change, for example, the context. Let's see what it gives. Now, we can see that by asking ChatGTP to change the question, we get a question that is more specific for us. Now, an extra prompt that I think is very useful for creating flashcards on Anki. You can tell ChatGTP to format the question and answers in the following way. Here, I tell it what to do and what to write for the question. Below, I tell it what to do and what format to use for the answer. So, let's see what it does. Now, we have a more formatted way to put our questions and answers in Anki. Now, we just copy and paste one of the question and answer. By adding the field answered, we get our question and answer on Anki. It's a pretty useful way to turn our notes into flashcards. And by asking JGTP to use this format, it just basically copy and paste. So, remember, if your notes are not good enough, ChatGTP will generate low quality questions and answers. If you are already taking the time to create some great notes, there is no reason why not use ChatGTP to speed up the process to turn notes into flashcards. But this process is useless if you don't import these questions and answers into Anki. In this video, I will show you how to incorporate step-by-step -step Anki into your study routine. See you there!